Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. It is me Desiree. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five products I purchased from Sephora and these were the first five things they recommended to me. Uh, I did a video like this a couple of years ago and I really liked it, had a lot of fun with it. Um, and on Sephora's website, if you scroll down enough, there's a little section, a little little slide bar there that says recommended for you as if they, they know you. Um, and every now and then I look at it to see what they recommend for me and I decided this time just to buy the first five things that were there. Um, three makeup items and two happen to be perfumes and I was gonna skip over the perfumes because I spend my whole life trying to avoid getting a headache and perfume is one of my biggest triggers for headaches. Uh, but I went for it anyway, so we'll see how it goes. So hopefully you enjoy this video and let's just see what the products were that they recommended to me. So I have here the Bobbi Brown Skin Concealer Stick. This is the first product that they recommended to me. What was I doing with the hand there? Where, where was I going? Um, I picked up the shade Cool Sand and I think this is a new product for Bobbi Brown if I'm not mistaken. And Bobbi Brown is a brand to me that I'm never really like wanting to try, never got a way to try anything. I have actually right here, I have a few of these long wear shadow sticks. Like they send these mini sizes and orders and stuff like that, like those, but I've never won out of my way to try anything else. I don't know why the brand just isn't, eh, I don't know. They don't do anything for me, but I think this is a new product for them. And I did swatch this and it's very, very creamy for a, um, stick concealer there's the shade i think it's gonna be a little light ish let's try it out though but it feels good in first swatch let me grab my mirror all right and i do have on a little bit of foundation already so i'm just going to put this on Ooh, this feels really really creamy super creamy i'm just gonna put it on a little bit of like extra redness i don't know let's just let's just put it on and try it out feels really good and i think magnetic closure Ooh, nice packaging. I thought this was gonna be too light for me, but I think it's gonna work. And I'm just using my Beauty Blender sponge. Let me try blending with my fingers just to see how it feels. Oh yeah, it feels kind of thick to blend with the fingers. Ooh, I think I kind of messed it up. Mmm. I don't like the way the one on my nose blended. I think I messed it up when I started doing it on my fingers, but it's fine, I'll wear it. Yeah, it's really thick. It feels really thick trying to blend with your fingers, but it blended really easily with the sponge. Covered up the redness, but not a ton. You know what, I'm gonna put a little more. Let's just, let's just keep going. Let's see if I can cover it all the way. But it's called Skin Concealer, so I'm assuming it's meant to be skin-like. It's not going to be a full coverage concealer. Ooh, that extra little bit really helped a lot. So I will wear this all day today. Uh, if I have, if I remember, I'll do a check-in to see how the products are wearing. Uh, but of course I will come back in two weeks and share my updated thoughts. Let me look up this concealer real quick just to see what the claims are. So I don't know, evening. So it says it's a color true concealer stick for evening. Evening, evening? Is evening and evening spelled exactly the same or was that a typo or am I just dumb? I don't know. Um, and brightening imperfections up to, I messed up, okay. A color true concealer stick for evening and brightening imperfections with up to 12 hours of crease proof comfort. <gasps> I should have tried it under the eyes and I didn't. I put concealer on already because I wasn't planning to use this under the eyes, but it says it's crease proof, so I will try it under the eyes in the next two weeks. So it says here it's first of its kind, that it's a comfortable formula. It stays all day without settling. So it says here it's Bobbi Brown's first of its kind transformative stick that conceals imperfections with creamy coverage. The comfortable formula stays the day without settling, creasing, or caking and delivers immediate all day moisture for smoother, plumper, healthier looking skin. So it does feel moisturizing and it's a very creamy concealer, although thick, but I think that thick is, the thick um, feeling that I'm getting is what's gonna help it last all day. Uh, dang, I really wish I tried it under the eyes uh, on my first impression, but I will try this under the eyes with the, over the next two weeks and we'll see if it creases. Uh, but so far, looks good. 
Next product I got is the Milk Makeup Bionic Bronzer, and I picked up the shade Time Travel. So this is a new bronzer for Milk Makeup, and I did swatch this, and I think it's gonna be an okay shade. It's this little tube here of like a liquid bronzer. Um, it says shake well before use, and that's it. All right, let's shake it up and let's try it out. My hair's drying and it's not drying the way I want. So I'm gonna flip it over like that. It's fine, it'll cut off the top. Ooh, it is thicker than I was expecting. I did swatch this when I first got it, which was two months ago that it's been sitting in this box, but I, I don't remember the texture. I just remember swatching it and seeing the color. So there is the bronzer. Ooh, is that gonna be a little too orange? Although I do enjoy an orange and red bronzer. I think it, I feel, I really like that undertone in bronzers. Um, I don't know, we'll try it out. How do I, how do I go about it? Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna kind of get what I just put on my hand on my sponge. Is this gonna work? And I'll just kind of put it on? It's not really doing anything, is it? I don't know. This is a very weird bronzer. This is weird. Do they make liquid bronzer already? Have I ever tried one? Because this is a, this feels weird to put bronzer on like this. Um, all right, let me just get a little bit more. This is really thick. It's like a thick cream. I wouldn't call it liquid. I don't know why I kept saying it was liquid, but I feel like this is a thick cream bronzer. Let me just, you know, I'm just gonna dab it on. I feel like I went too low right there. Ugh, it's fine. I feel like I'm a little bit washed out in the camera just because I have the window open or the blinds open. But I, I like the tone so far and the way that it's showing up. Oh yeah, dabbing it on and then blending it out was definitely the way to go. Um, I do like to put a little bronzer on my nose, but I feel like I'm gonna get too much if I do it this way. I'll just go quick like this. All right. So, ooh, you know what? I think I really like that. I really like this tone. It looks so natural. I really like it. Oh my gosh, I am shocked because I wasn't expecting the color. I thought it was gonna be really orange, but you know what? I really, really like it. I think it looks wonderful. All right, let's move on to the next product. I'm gonna do a little bit of bronzer on my neck real quick and then we'll move on to the little palette that was recommended to me. And the bronzer I picked out was the Rimmel Natural Bronzer in the shade Sunlight. I think this one goes really well with that Bionic Bronzer because it has a little bit of red undertone to it. And I just love that bronzer. So bronzer done and I love it. Like I would be perfectly happy just putting mascara on and then this just being my makeup for the day. I love the way that it looks. I love it. I think it looks great. All right, let's move on to the next product. I'm gushing, I'm gushing on myself. Uh, the next product they recommended to me is actually from Pat McGrath Labs, and it's the Pat McGrath Bridgerton palette. I think this is kind of weird, like a really weird collaboration, because on the back it also has a Netflix logo, and I don't know, I just think it was kind of strange. I've also never seen Bridgerton, couldn't tell you what it's about, but this is the Divine Blush and Glow Trio, and it's called Love at First Blush. And it is two blushes. Oh look, I haven't even taken that plastic off. I'm telling you, these have been sitting in that box this whole time. It comes with two blushes and a highlighter. I have swatched the highlighter because um, I just wanted to see like the tone and stuff. And I think it's gonna be way over the top intense, but we will try it out anyway. It comes with two really beautiful looking blushes. They just have this really pretty impression on them. This one's like a really pretty mauve, and then this one is just a nice, I don't know, rosy pink, but they both look like they're satin finish. This one here might be matte, but the, the one in the middle is definitely satin. So, and then they come with that over the top highlight. Um, do I swatch it? No, I'm not gonna swatch the blushes because I don't wanna mess up the pattern, but I will swatch the highlight. I don't know, the color too just looked a little bit dark. It's right there. It just looked a little bit dark, like it almost might be something to top off a blush with. So you know what, maybe that's what I'll do. Cause I just feel like as a highlight, it, it's just a little too pigmented, like a pink for me. I don't know. We'll try it out, let's just try it out. I'm going to use 
this very clean brush. I actually want to buy another one of these. I recently bought, so this is the blush brush I'm going to use today. It's the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH06. This is one of the best brushes in the world. I freaking love this brush for everything. And I picked up the Eco Tools Soft Highlight Brush because I thought it might be like just, I don't know, a dupe or something. But it's not. The Eco Tools one is way too flimsy. It doesn't work for anything. I don't like it at all. So anyway, I'm going to use, you know what? Let's go with the pink one. This one right here. I'm going to go for that one. Just because I feel like with this bronzy look I got here, this, I don't know how much to get. I'm just going to kind of dab it in and we'll just kind of go with it. That's something I love about this brush too, is it really diffuses the color. So even if I got too much, it's going to make it seem like it's not that much. I just love this brush a lot. We're just going to put it on like that. Ooh, that's really pretty. I was expecting it to be more pigmented, but I think it's the, bl the brush that's um, really helping it diffuse a lot better. Ooh, too pigmented. I spoke too soon. It looks all right. Love the color. I like that I can see my freckles through it still. I like it. Um, I'm gonna try out the highlighter. Wait, let's see. Let me find a clean-ish brush. Oh my God, I need to clean these brushes so bad. Uh, I'm kind of like not wanting to use the highlighter, but um, we'll, just, we'll just put a little bit. Let's see. Ooh, very shiny. I'm barely tapping in here too. Cause I just feel like it's gonna be too much and it's too pigmented. Definitely not for my skin tone anyway. Ooh, I don't know, I don't even wanna use it. I don't even wanna use it. Look at my poor sponge. I soaked up all that bronzer with it. I feel like I did too much blush and the highlight just kind of emphasized it, the pinkiness, cause it's, I don't know. I don't know about the highlight, but okay. I don't, I don't like this blush now that I look at my face. I think because I liked the way it looked so much without the blush, now I'm like, I don't really like it. I don't like it. I don't like it that much. Let's see if I can tone it down. I think it's that highlight. It made the blush look like it's all the way up here now because the highlight just had so much tone to it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some of this Bobbi Brown concealer stick and I'm going to see if I can just tone down that highlight because it looks like the highlights all the way up here. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it'll tone down throughout the day. All right. Well, that's the best it's gonna get. I feel like it's looking more intense in the camera than it is in real life, because in real life I think it looks fine. I just feel like the highlight makes the blush look like it's all the way up here. The highlight is not for me. So I didn't pick up any eyeshadows or anything, so I think I'm just gonna use this, these two um, blushes and that highlighter on my eyes real quick, and then we'll talk about the other two products that Sephora recommended to me. All right, I just used the this like pink one, the one I used as blush, I used that on my eyelids and then I used the highlighter on the lid as like a little topper or shimmer color and I think it looks fine. I think it like ties in this over the top blush I put on. So let's talk about the last two products. They're actually both perfumes and um, I'm going to zoom out for this part. I look so little and far away now. Um, let me look up the notes real quick on these perfumes so I sound like I know what I'm talking about. So they recommended two perfumes to me. The first one being Ellis Brooklyn Salt. This is the Eau de Parfum Rollerball. And this one, I haven't sprayed yet, but I think I'm going to wear it today. It just looks so cute. Really nice packaging. And it just smells like um, the way you would think salt smells. The way you would think the beach smells, but it actually smells like fish water. This is what you want the beach to smell like. Um, it smells like salty, you know what it kind of smells like? Like Verb Sea Spray. No, like um, Bumble and Bumble Surf Spray or the Verb Salts, Sea Salts Shampoo Conditioner. Mmm, I can't wait to spray this one. Pray for me that it doesn't give me a headache. 
Okay, it says here it captures the essence of salty skin, the creamy heat of the sun, and a whiff of tropical florals. Salt is a sensual, complex, and soul healing. The fragrance is also vegan and... It says PETA certified cruelty free, but that means nothing to me. It says here that keynotes are Ylang Ylang, Tahitian Tiar, I don't know, and Amberger. Oh my god, I wanted to sound like I knew what I was talking about, and I don't even know how to pronounce these words. I can't wait to spray this. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna spray that one today. And then the other one that I got that they recommended to me is Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium Illicit Green. And I have smelled black opium a lot. So we used to have, um, ooh, I smelled this one time when I first got the box and haven't smelled it since. Ooh, that smells warm. This is a nighttime fragrance for sure. Anyway, uh, the store I used to work at, we used to have these testers of perfumes out and there was a guy that would come in every single morning and spray the black opium on himself every single day, every day. He used up the whole bottle. Um, and so I got very familiar with how that scent smells and I could smell it a mile away if someone's wearing black opium. And this smells like black opium but like a tiny bit different. And I love when brands do stuff like this where they have like their iconic or like their signature scent and they do a little twist on it. Really love when brands do that because you get the like, ooh, I know this familiar scent but it's a little different. So ooh, the fragrance description on this one says it's like a shot of adrenaline. This fragrance features a signature accord of black coffee Really? I didn't smell coffee in it. A twisted with luscious green mandarin and creamy fig. Ooh, that sounds so good. A zesty and unique take on the classic eau de parfum. Illicit green is energizing and thrilling to wear. Interesting. Key notes are green, mandarin, fig, and coffee. Hmm. I'm definitely going to wear this one, but I will try that one out at nighttime. This is one I think might give me a headache. It just, sell it just smells like a scent that is going to last all day long. And I do kind of like when my perfumes wear off a little bit throughout the day. But let's go ahead and spray this one. The salt one. I'm just going to do it on my wrists. Mmm. Oh my goodness. It doesn't smell as salty as it does in the tube, like just smelling it from here. It smells a lot different on my skin. Yeah, but maybe it'll change throughout the day. We shall see. Mmm, that smells really fresh. I'm going to be smelling myself all day. I kind of get like a whiff of lilac, like a lilac scent. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. All right, enough about the perfumes. But now let's cut to my two-week follow-up. All right, it's been two weeks since I filmed that first impressions. I can't believe it's been two weeks. Where does the time go? I swear I blink and it's already the weekend. Um, so let me share with you how the products have been working with me for the last two weeks. Um, this is the Bobbi Brown Skin Concealer Stick. I've been using this every single day um, and I really prefer it under the eyes only. Uh, it's very, very creamy. Oh, like it's... It's one of those satisfyingly creamy stick makeup things that you just want to like draw all over your face because it's kind of just satisfying, you know? Um, it's very, very creamy. I go straight from the stick under the eyes. I don't draw it all the way out like this. I have just been doing this inner darkest like on the side of the nose part and then right here. And then I pat it out with my finger and then kind of just move it around till it gets... Uh, out here. I kind of just use the residual like leftover stuff out here. I don't draw, I don't know, I just feel like it's a little too heavy for that area, but that's just my preference, you know. Um, I do think this blends out the best with fingers. I, I don't know if it's just like the warmth of the fingertips mixed with like the thickness of this concealer that help it just kind of get a little creamier and like a little bit more movement to it, if that makes sense. I have found that when I tried to blend it with the sponge, I don't know if it's just the dampness of the sponge maybe, like the little tiny bit of water that's in the sponge mixed with the concealer. It just doesn't work. Um, anytime I have used this on my face as like I want to just do it as just concealer, maybe I'm doing no foundation that day and I just want to spot conceal. If I try to blend it with the sponge, it almost like breaks up the concealer and it like starts separating and it just blends really bad and it doesn't look good. So I have found even when I use this on my face, like today I put a little on my chin, I put a little bit here on this extra redness on my cheeks, I blended it with my fingertip. I like the thickness that it has and the creaminess, it blends out well with the fingers, it just kind of takes a minute to, to move it around. 
Coverage is very, very nice. Um, I do the one application and then after I blend that all in, I do go with a little tiny bit more in this darkest part that's usually right here and then just pat that in with my finger and I'm good to go the rest of the day. Um, it does seem to last my whole work day without fading or disappearing or anything. It does claim to have crease proof and settle proof or at least up to 12 hours it should increase. But on me, everything under the eyes creases, even my favorite, favorite concealers. Actually, you know what? The only one that doesn't crease is the Maybelline um, Master Conceal Concealer. I don't know how they did that one. It doesn't crease. It's so weird. Uh, but this one, because of how creamy it is and how thick it is, depending on how much you use, yeah, it's probably going to crease. But it's one of those concealers that easily just pats out with your finger. Like right now, I don't know if you can see. I'm not going to really go out of my way to zoom in, but there is some creasing um, on the under eye, I just noticed it. You can't see it just looking like this, like I can't see that my concealer is creased even looking in a mirror. It's only when you kind of move your, your skin around and you can see that concealer has creased in that area. So I don't know, to me it's not the end of the world and it pats out super easy and just like that the crease is gone. It doesn't continue to crease throughout the day, at least in my experience. Just kind of that first initial application when, you know, a little bit kind of gathers around, you kind of pat it out and then it's good to go. Um, I do really like this concealer for the under eyes. It's very moisturizing and it has a nice emollient uh, quality to it. So I feel like if you have dry under eyes and you have an issue trying to find something that feels good or, or doesn't dry down, this one's really lovely. I do really like it a lot, actually. Um, glad I picked it up. Glad Sephora recommended it to me because I never would have in a million years picked this out on my own. Um, but I really like it. I think it's a wonderful under eye concealer. Okay spot concealer, but I find it's, uh, I don't know, just a damp sponge. It just doesn't blend that well. I do prefer to blend it with my fingers. Next product, the bronzer. So this is the Milk Makeup Bionic Bronzer. It is bronzer with skin care superpowers. Hydrating liquid bronzer for natural looking skin sun-kissed effect. I love this bronzer. I know they say that it's a liquid, but I feel like it's more of a cream. It definitely has a, I don't want to say a thickness to it, but it is definitely on the thicker side. It, it definitely feels like a cream and not a liquid. And also in my experience, oh yeah, that is cream all the way. It's very creamy. It has a nice uh, viscous quality to it like it's it's a little bit on the thick side but it blends out so easily it's not going to give you any trouble to blend I do prefer to blend this out with a damp sponge this is my my dirty beauty blender that I used I just get a little bit out on my hand it does say to shake it by the way shake it up before you use it um, get a little on the hand and then I dab the sponge on it like this and then I put the bronzer wherever I want it it's very, very easy to use. It has very lovely pigmentation. And in my experience, a little goes a long way. Like today, I feel like I put on too much. Maybe the sun is washing a little bit, a bit of it out. But after I was done, I was like, am I too bronzy? Did I put on too much? Um, but either way, I think it looks very, very natural, but not like it's gone. You know, some like natural makeup almost looks like it's not there. Uh, this one looks like you have bronzer on and I like that kind of a look. Obviously, you don't have to go overboard like I did. Use a little, start slow, super easy to blend. It also goes on really well on top of powder. So if you were to set your makeup first and then go in with the, the cream bronzer, it's going to go on just fine. It's not going to like cake up or mess with your makeup that's underneath. It doesn't make your uh, foundation disappear. Of course, be cautious when doing that kind of stuff. If you're like going to town blending with a brush, you're probably going to be also disturbing your foundation that you just put on. So like, I swear this is more of a cream. It just doesn't feel like liquid to me. Liquid bronzers, a liquid blush, liquid highlighters, to, they're not really my thing. I find them to be a little too wet, a little too watery, and I do find that they kind of disturb the makeup underneath. This doesn't do that. Did I say the shade I had? It was the shade Time Travel. Yeah, time travel. I love this so much. And I know it looks like a tiny little tube, but a little goes a long way. You don't need like a huge squirt every day of this stuff. Like a little start slow, like I said. It's awesome. I really like it. If you already like cream bronzers, you will like this. And in my opinion, it's cream, not liquid. I love it so much. I look forward to using it every day. I just love it a lot. 
Um, the next thing here is the Pat McGrath Bridgerton Blush and uh, Blush. What is it called? Blush and Glow Trio. It's called Love at First Blush. I think this is just kind of weird. I don't really like having a Netflix logo on my stuff, but whatever. So this is the Blush Blush Highlighter. Uh, I really like this. I didn't like the highlighter for a long time. I just think that the color is a little too pigmented and it looks like blush to me. Like it looks like a glowy blush, at least on my skin tone. I love this one in the middle here. It's just this really neutral with a little bit of rosiness to it. And then this one here, uh, very pink. I do use a light hand with that one or I use a brush like this. I actually really don't like this brush. I say, I feel like I've said that in every video lately. Is, it, is this called Beautifully Luxe, the Eco Tools new brushes? They're very pretty, but the bristles are too long and too flimsy. They don't pick up blush well. But with pigmented blushes like that where I don't want to go overboard, this blush, this brush has been working well for that. So I just get like one dab of that one and I'll put it on. But today I went with the middle one. I put that one all over my face and then I went with the blush brush and I dabbed like this one time into the highlighter tapped it off and then I just dabbed it on my face as kind of like a blush topper and I kind of made it look like a glowy blush and then also got some highlight on my skin as well. Um, I really like that technique better than getting just a highlight brush in there because then I feel like it looks like I put blush where the highlighter is supposed to be, you know? At least that's how I think. That's how, that's how this made sense to me. I really, really, really like this. Um, if you have any other Pat McGrath blushes, let me know if this is the same formula as like her single blushes because I've been wanting to get one of those but if I have these I obviously don't really need one. Love the formula. It's very very smooth, very nice, easy to use, blendable, doesn't get patchy or anything like that. Um, yeah, I like this. I think it's a wonderful palette. Okay, and then the last two things I have here are the perfume. So this is the Ellis Brooklyn Salt Eau de Parfum. I wore this a few times and I, I just don't like it. I, this is just not for me. It's not my scent. I don't smell like myself. I smell like a stranger when I wear this. And although it smells really good from the container, like from here, on my skin and just what I sprayed it into like the air the first time I tried it out just to kind of get a sense of how it was going to smell, how strong it was. It smelled okay. Put it on my skin. It just doesn't smell like me. I don't like, I don't know. It just smells like, um... Like I smelled like a stranger or something. To me, it just it's just not my kind of scent. It's very, um, I don't know why. I kept picturing someone who works in a corporate office that would smell like this. Not that it's a bad smell. It's just, it's not me. It smells more like a grown woman. Um, it's a nice, fresh, light scent. Doesn't smell like alcohol. Um, it did give me a headache though. It is a little bit of a stronger scent. Lasts for a long time. Um, it's just not for me though. Just not my scent. Uh, and then the other one I have here is the Black Opium YSL. This is actually the Black Opium Illicit Green. I really like this one. Mmm. It just has such a, like, a, a warm, spicy, but sweet kind of smell. Mmm. It just smells really, really good. It smells like Black Opium but like a little bit of like a twist of freshness, a little bit lighter than black opium usually smells. That one I like the smell of, but I find it's way too strong for me. Mmm, I like this one a lot. Um, I only wore it a couple times and I only do like one tiny spray as far as I can, like way over here and then I dab it between my arms and then that's it for the whole day. A little goes a long way with this and I think that's a good thing because this, these kind of perfumes are not very cheap, so I'm glad that a little goes a long way. It'll last the whole entire day. If you like Black Opium, I think you would also like this one. It's just a, a nice little twist and freshen up for the scent. You know, it's not too heavy. Uh, Black Opium for me smells like a nighttime perfume, and this one smells like a nice summer hot day. I don't know. I just, I really like this one a lot. So that is it. Those are my two-week follow-up reviews on the products. Let me know what you think. Have you tried any of these things? Let me know what your experience has about the products. I would love to know. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I will see you later in another video. Goodbye.